The equilibrium constant is represented KEQ. It's the ratio of product concentrations to reactant concentrations at equilibrium, with each concentration being raised to a power equal to the number of moles of that substance in a balanced equation. The value of KEQ will depend on temperature, so if the temperature changes, the value of KEQ would change as well. If looking at our general equation at the bottom, we can see that it's products over reactants. And these coefficients are going to be what they're all raised to the power of. We only put aqueous and gaseous species in an equilibrium expression because solids and liquids concentrations would not change and therefore do not go in the equilibrium expression. Also, when you're writing your expression, always put K equals or KEQ equals. It's not an expression without that K equals. So let's see how to write some equilibrium expressions for things other than A's and B's. So we write KEQ is equal to our products. Our first one is H2O, and it's raised to the power of 6. And O raised to the power of 4 over NH3 to the power of 4 and oxygen to the power of 5. That's our KEQ expression. On B, remember that we do not include any solids or liquids. So for B, we're going to eliminate A silver chloride. And now we can write our expression just as we did on A. So it's products. In this case, our product has a charge. Make sure that you include that charge with the silver. Times chlorine over our reactants, which in this case canceled out, so it's just over one. You can eliminate that over one and just leave it like so. So anytime you do not have any products or reactants because they canceled out due to being solids or liquids, you're going to put a one where they go, whether it be top or bottom. But if it's on the bottom, you can erase that or not put it. But if it's on the top, you're going to need it. I'm going to pause the video and try C and D on your own. Restart when you have the answer. So for C, you should have got SO2 squared times oxygen over SO3 squared. And for the bottom one, you should have eliminated magnesium and magnesium chloride. So 1 over chlorine. In this case, you should have left the 1 because otherwise the chlorine will not be on the bottom. And we need it on the bottom of the expression. We can also put a value to the equilibrium constant, and that's going to show us if the products or reactants are favored in the reaction. If the products are favored, then KEQ will be greater than 1. That means we have more products than reactants at equilibrium. If KEQ is less than 1, then that means the reactants are favored, therefore we will have very few products at equilibrium. So the larger that your K, the more products you would have. So in this first example, all the diagrams represent systems at equilibrium. They're all in the same sized containers. So without doing any calculations, rank the following systems in order of increasing KEQ. Remember that increasing KEQ should be smallest to largest. And the larger your KEQ, the more products you have. I'm going to pause the video and try to reason that out. Restart when you have an answer. The first thing you should have done was count up how many reactants and products you had in each system. Looking at that, we have 10 atoms in each of the systems, and system B has the least amount of products, so system B must have the lowest K. System A has the next amount, and system C has the most products. Therefore, in increasing order, it should be BAC. 
Now they want you to calculate the KEQ for each of the containers. The volume of the containers is one liter, and each of those spheres represent 0.1 moles. So let's look at system A and see how we would do that. So we need our counts for each. We have four and six. First thing you want to do is write your equilibrium expression. And so KEQ is equal to my concentration of V over my concentration of R. Since I need concentration, remember that concentration or molarity is moles over liters. Since I have a one liter container, then my moles should equal my molarity. So I have four R's and they're 0.1. So for R, it should be four or 0.4 over one liter, which is a molarity of 0.4 molarity. So for my B, I have 0.6 molarity over 0.4 molarity, giving me a KEQ of 1.5. No units on KEQ. Go ahead and calculate your KEQ for system B and C. Restart when you have your answers. For system B, you should have had 0.2 over 0.8, which gave you a KEQ of 0.25. And for system C, 2 and 8, which was 0.8 over 0.2, or 4.0 for two sig figs. Looking at this example, it's exactly what we did a second ago, except we're not going to be counting spheres in this problem. They gave us the moles of each substance. Remember that moles does not go into your equilibrium expression. We need molarity. And this is a three liter container, so my moles do not equal my molarity. Make sure that you show your work on how you got molarity. Do not just plug it into the calculator. Now that I have my molarities, I can write my KEQ expression. Always write your equilibrium expression regardless of if it tells you to. Sometimes you'll get points for it and it tells you what you should be plugging in. And the people that don't write their KEQ expressions make more mistakes. This problem though, it does say write the equilibrium expression. So now I need to plug in my NO2. Make sure I look back at my equilibrium expression. That should be squared. And so solving that out, I get this, but I only want two sig figs. So 0 0.067, and again, no units on your KEQ. This question also wants to know if the reactants or products are favored. Remember that if K is greater than one, the products are favored, less than one, the reactants are favored. Since this is less than one, my reactants are favored. I'm gonna pause the video and try this one on your own. Restart when you have your answer. So you should have calculated your molarity and shown work, written your KEQ expression, and then plugged in your values into your KEQ expression. 
Solving that out, you get 47.4, but we want two sig figs, so just 47. In this case, our K is much larger than one, so the products are favored. Try this last one on your own. Restart when you have your answer. So the first thing you should have done was written your equilibrium expression. Then we are given moles, so we need to look at volume. Moles is equal to our molarity. But in this problem, they gave us the equilibrium constant, so we're going to plug that value in. We know our chlorine is for molarity. We know our bromine is for molarity, and we're looking for BrCl2, so that's our X. But we know that it's going to be squared because we have squared in the equilibrium expression. So solving that equation, I multiply by X squared, and then I divide by 11.1, .1, giving me X squared is equal to 1.441. To solve that, square root both sides. And x is equal to 1.2 moles. It equals 1.2 moles because it's 1 liter. Had this not been 1 liter, though, then that would have solved for my molarity, and then I would have had to plug it in. The molarity equals moles over liters to solve for my moles. In this problem, because my equilibrium constant was 11, then the products were favored. 